לי שם מחבלים. אני שואלת אותו בחזרה, יש שם אזרחים? הוא אומר לי, לא יודע, תראי לי שם פגז. Pretty shocking, although it, it, it confirms everything that I've been saying and so many people have been saying since this genocide began. So this is an interview with a former captive, someone who was taken hostage by Hamas and was part of the release. Remember, there was a uh, release uh, back in November. And part of, that, part of the release that I covered that most people did not is, so Hamas was, uh, part of the deal was Hamas releases this many captives and Israel releases some of the 5,000 hostages they have in prison, right? They had 5,000 before October 7th. They have uh, closer to 10,000. Now, people did not cover that as Israel is releasing the, some of these people, out the front door that they've held hostage for possibly years. As Israel is releasing them, they're going into the West Bank, maybe some in Gaza, but mainly the West Bank, and grabbing up an equal number. And, and I assume it was done as a, mainly as just a, a FU to the entire uh, ceasefire deal that didn't last long, and but it did get some people freed from both sides. And in this interview, this is uh, being brought to you by Electronic Intifada, which is a great site uh, that does a lot of great work. This is an Israeli held hostage uh, for, I think, 55 days. She's doing a pro-Israel interview. And yet, even within that, if you read what she actually says or listen to what she actually says, it is the exactly what many of us have been saying about the number of people the IDF killed on October 7th and 8th. An Israeli woman taken captive by Palestinian fighters on October 7th is grateful to the helicopter pilot who shot at the vehicle she was riding in, killing another Israeli captive, as well as all of their abductors. So she's thankful to the heli the IDF helicopter pilots who just tried to kill everyone. And she says in the interview, I don't know if I uh, have this part, but she says in the interview that she knows that even though she survived the IDF shooting at her and her in the vehicle, she knew that if they, if they came back, she would be killed. She still said, thank you. You know, I mean, that's the level of brainwashing they've got going on in Israel, by the way. Shani Gorin, a 29-year-old resident of uh, Kibbutz Niraz, was taken from her home at gunpoint by Palestinian fighters and transported to the Gaza Strip, where she was held for 55 days. She was released November 30th. Before she reached Gaza, however, a vehicle carrying Gorin away, carrying Gorin away came under heavy fire from an Israeli combat helicopter. When the gunfire ceased, Gorin realized that the helicopter's high-caliber bullets had killed all of her abductors, as well as one Israeli woman, a fellow Niroz resident, Efrat Katz. So this is a clear depiction of the uh, Hamas has taken, uh, this is at least two captives in this one car, two hostages. The IDF comes along and just tries to murder everyone. Very clearly. They had no idea who was in the car, or how many captives, how many. Uh, they're just mur trying to murder everyone. That is their plan. It's called the Hannibal Directive. And I've covered it a lot, but, uh, you know, it's a drip, drip, drip of more information, more proof coming out. Gorin and the other Israeli captives who survived the volley of helicopter gunfire were abducted again minutes later by other Palestinians returning from the kibbutz on one of the tractors of the kibbutz. Basically, other Hamas fighters then come by, the helicopter's gone, and they then basically recapture this woman who's giving the interview right here. October On October 7th, the Israeli army implemented its controversial Hannibal Directive, which amounts to an order to assassinate Israeli captives to avoid having to barter for their lives by freeing Palestinians held in Israeli prisons. And it also shows just how little Israel, the government, cares about these humans. Like, they don't care about any average person. They'd rather these captives be dead. I mean, for all they knew, the IDF shooting could have killed just the captives and not killed any abductors. And they would have been fine with that. The IDF would have been like, all right, cool. I mean, it is so sociopathic. It's unbelievable. At Kibbutz Beri, another Israeli colonial settlement near the Gaza boundary fence, the Israeli army attacked a home containing 14 civilian captives and several dozen Hamas fighters. So then the tanks arrive and basically obliterate everyone and everything, including children. Hi, Matan, 
עם מכוונות ידיים של אותו חייל, והוא מצביע לי לטוב ואומר לי, תראי לשם פגז, יש שם מחבלים. אני שואלת אותו בחזרה, יש שם אזרחים? הוא אומר לי, לא יודע, תראי לשם פגז. Israeli news outlet Yannet reported in November how 28 fighter helicopters shot over the course of the day all of the ammunition they had in renewed runs to rearm. Can you imagine how many bullets your average combat heli helicopter has on it? I don't know what the number is, but I can guarantee you it's thousands and thousands of bullets, and they're just murdering everyone. This is how 300 some odd people, I think it was 300, or maybe it was 600, I, can't, I think it was 300 something, people were, were murdered at the Nova Music Festival. It was not Hamas militants with, you know, guns in their hands. The, the mass death was these combat helicopters shooting thousands of rounds and bombs. I brought you the photo of the bombed out cars as well. At least one survivor of the same Israeli helicopter attack that killed Niraz, resident Efrat Katz, has blasted, that killed Efrat Katz. So a different survivor, this is a different survivor of the uh, Israeli helicopter attack, has blasted Israel, Israel's repeated readiness to sacrifice the lives of its citizens. Um, her last name is Cunio, and she said, the feeling we had there, so, so she was also taken captive, and she was also kept for 55 days. Her husband is still a captive, or is dead, one or the other, uh, she doesn't know, but her husband is still there, and she is furious with Netanyahu and the Netanyahu regime for doing nothing to save her her husband and the other captives. She says, quote, the feeling we had there, she means as a captive, is that no one is doing anything for us. The fact is that I was in a hiding place that was bombed and we were forced to be smuggled out of there, wounded, not counting the helicopter that shot at us on the way to Gaza. You claim there is intelligence, but the fact is we were bombed. And it's not that they don't have intelligence. It's that they're trying to kill everyone. Again, the captives and the uh, captors, they're, they're just murdering everyone. It, it, it's sociopathy to the highest, highest degree.